everyone, Neon Jigglypuff here, and welcome to another top 5 video, or should I say a top 6 video, because today I'm going to be ranking all the characters in The Fighters Pass 2. Before I start, I just want to say that this was a very hard list to make, because I've liked every single character in this whole character pack, like there wasn't a single one that I didn't like. So just keep in mind that I like all the characters and I don't really hate a single one at all, so they're all good in my book. Anyway, let's get started with number 6, my least favorite but still really cool character in Fighters Pass 2. Ah, here we are, number six, Min Min from ARMS. Now, just because she's at number six doesn't mean I don't like her. In fact, I really like Min Min because honestly, I'm a really big fan of ARMS and it was a shame that ARMS kind of, uh, you know, died out when Splatoon 2 came out. It's a shame I didn't really get a chance to shine, but um, I still like ARMS. Anyway, if I like her so much, why is she on the bottom of the list? Well, it's one simple thing. While I do love ARMS and I do like Min Min as a character, she's not exactly my number one choice. Now, if I were in charge of which ARMS character was going to be added to Smash Brothers, I would probably choose either Ribbon Girl or Lola Pop, since those two are my go-to characters. Now, the reason why I like Min Min so much is because she gave ARMS a second chance to live on in Smash Brothers outside of Assist Trophies or Spirits. When the game first came out, it was kind of weird that we didn't have an ARMS character in the playable roster. Like, sure, it was still a new franchise, but ARMS is still part of Nintendo, and it felt weird to not have them in Smash Bros. early on. So having Min Min join the roster really does complete a kind of void that was left in the base roster. Now here's a tiny nitpick I have with Min Min's trailer. In the trailer, she's shown to have regular human arms, and then she transforms them into her coil arms. That's not how it works in ARMS lore. In ARMS lore, arms just kind of happen and you need a mask to control them, just like the one she wears right here. And once you get arms, you can't go back to your human arms ever again. You're stuck like that forever. And Min Min's more of a zoning character and the characters that I like are more in your face and like rushdown characters. So zoning's not really my thing. So that's kind of why she's last place. I still love the character, don't get me wrong. I love Min Min but her playstyle just isn't really for me. But before we move on to number five, I absolutely have to mention how great ARMS soundtrack is and how amazing the remixes are. I mean, do you hear the music that's playing right now? It's amazing. But with that all said, it is time to move on to number five, my fifth favorite character in Fighters Pass 2, who I still really, really like. And that character is... Number 5 on this list is none other than Kazuya from the Tekken series. You know, it's a real shame that I have to put him down to number 5 because I really like Kazuya and I really like Tekken. His theme song is so good, I've listened to that on loop for hours all last year. His theme reminds me of Metroid, and if you know me, I love Metroid, so his theme is really good in my book. Anyway, let's get down to why he's only number 5 despite me liking him so much. Now, the reason why he's only number five is purely based on my taste of characters. It's because I don't know how to play real fighting game character because I only know how to play baby games. No, that's not true. The real reason why he's number five is because I don't really know how to play him very well. I mean, I did say earlier that I am a Tekken fan, but I'm still a new Tekken fan, so I don't really know all the tips and tricks on how to be good in Tekken. AKA, I don't know how to be good with Kazuya, 
but despite all of that, I still like playing Kazuya for fun. I mean, his moveset is very nice. Even his side taunt does damage. And you can tell that the Smash team put a lot of love and care into Kazuya's moveset. I mean, you can tell they're really passionate about Tekken. And to be honest, we were long overdue for a Tekken character in Smash Brothers. I mean, I'm surprised it didn't happen in Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, considering that Bandai Namco was making the game. Although we did get a Heiachi Mii costume. Speaking of Heiachi, he was actually going to be a playable character in Smash Bros. 4, but he was cut due to complications with his moveset being a little too complex for Smash Brothers. But here we are in the future, and we have Kazuya, and a Mii costume for Heiachi, so, uh, so I say we ate pretty well. And the last thing I want to mention are Kazuya's alts. I mean, his color costumes are some of the best in Smash Ultimate. And my favorite one being the Golden Tux. I mean, I really like when characters have gold alts. So that wraps up my opinion on Kazuya for Fighters Pass 2. I really like him, and I'm really glad to have him around here. So with that all said, let's move on to number 4, my fourth favorite character in Fighters Pass 2. Ah yes, number 4 is none other than Pyra and Mithra. They're actually a 2-in-1 fighter in the same vein as Zelda and Sheik in the older Smash Bros games, as well as Pokemon Trainer being a 3-in-1 fighter. Now, what makes Pyra and Mithra better than Kazuya and Min Min? Well, it really comes down to the fact that I really like Xenoblade 2. Not as much as Xenoblade 1, but Xenoblade 2 was still a really good game. Even though I haven't beaten it yet, I still enjoyed my time with it and I will beat it eventually. But besides that, I actually really like playing as Pyra and Mithra. In fact, I would go as far to say that I'm pretty good with them, at least for casual standards, not for competitive standards. I just love the fact that they're essentially two characters in one. Pyra being a lot slower and a much, much heavier hitter, and Mithra being quicker, lighter, and doing significantly less damage, but is more capable of doing combos. And my personal favorite way to play these characters is to start off with Mithra, and once you get to high percent, you switch to Pyra, and you get as much damage in as possible, which seems to be the more popular way, but, you know, it works. And I personally like how Rex appears in their taunts, their final smashes, and their victory poses. I mean, it sucks that he's not playable, but it's still nice to have him be a part of the game, even if he is just cosmetic. And speaking of cosmetics, I really, really love their alts. My favorite one being this one. I mean, they just look really good in that color scheme. And I really love the detail in their renders, too. So that about wraps it up for Pyra and Mithra, and with that all said, let's move on to number 3, my third favorite character in Fighters Pass 2. Holy crap. Never in my life would I have ever expected Sephiroth to ever be in Smash Brothers, especially as a playable character. This blew my mind out of the water. On this very special day, aka the Game Awards 2020, me and my friends were watching it live and we didn't know what was about to hit us. The trailer was absolutely amazing. In fact, it was one of the best trailers Smash Brothers has ever given us. In fact, it was even inspired by Final Fantasy Advent Children, which is a movie. And a fantastic movie at that. I mean, it's beautiful. It even made me cry. When it comes down to his moveset, I'm not so good with him. His moveset is fine, don't get me wrong, I love the way he plays. It's just, I'm not that good at playing as him. But what keeps him so high is that he's a really hype character. He's very important to the roster, he was such a great addition. I mean, he is the most badass character in the entire roster, and he is the embodiment of what a villain should be. And not only that, but he brought in music, me costumes, and a spirit board. That's something we needed from the very beginning, but we never got, because Square was being way too stingy with their IP. But now, it feels like Final Fantasy VII is a true part of Smash Brothers at long last. And it's all thanks to Sephiroth. And that is why he is number three. 
He may have brought despair to Smash Brothers, but he sure did bring happiness to my heart. And with that all said, let's move on to my second favorite character in Fighters Pass 2. Wow. Wow. I mean, wow. This is number two, Steve from Minecraft. I can't believe I'm saying that. Now, just like with Terry in the last video, I have a funny story with Steve. So this actually goes back all the way to the Smash Wii U days. Yeah. So Steve, for a while, was actually my least wanted character in Smash history. I mean, I made a list of what characters I would never wanted to see in Smash Brothers, and Steve was actually number one. I even went as far as to say Steve didn't belong in Smash Brothers in a video I did quite a while ago, which... Here it is if you want to see it and laugh at me. And even the night before he was announced, I said to myself, I don't care who this newcomer is, as long as it's not Steve. So you might be thinking, if you hated Steve so much, why is he number two on your list? Well, my friend, I'm about to tell you why. So I'm secretly a Minecraft fan, and I mean a big Minecraft fan. I was never into it back when it was new, I only just started to get into Minecraft about two years ago, but I was never man enough to admit it around my friends because I knew if I did, I would never hear the end of it. Just like now. I just know I'm never gonna hear the end of this. But I can't hide it. I honestly didn't think it would suit the world of Smash Brothers. Now in hindsight, that's really stupid, but just hear me out. It wasn't until I actually saw Steve in action, like in his trailer, and even discovering that Minecraft is the top selling game of all time. That made me realize that Smash Brothers isn't just about Nintendo, it's about gaming. And Minecraft is really important to gaming. And therefore, Steve isn't just a good fit for Smash, he belongs in a game like Smash. And now here we are, a year and a half later, and guess what? Not only do I like Steve, but Steve is actually my main. Yes, he's my Smash Bros main as of his release date. Overall, Steve was an amazing addition to Smash Bros, and I could not be happier with his inclusion. But wait, there's still one more character. Who could top Steve? I mean, he's my main after all. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. This is it, my number one favorite DLC character in Fighters Pass 2, and of all time. <laughs> I got you again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. And here we are, my number one most favorite DLC character of all time. Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I cannot believe I'm saying that. First off, I want to give Smash a round of applause for actually getting Sora in Smash Brothers. Now, for a long time, Sora has been a dream character of mine up there with Waluigi, Ridley, King K. Rool, etc. But I honestly never thought that it would happen because Sora is a Disney character. No matter how you look at it, in every way, shape, or form, Sora is a Disney character, and Disney is very stingy with their IP, even more stingy than Square and Nintendo, so I never thought it would happen, because Sora is just copyright hell, the character. But my god, they managed to make it happen! Now, Sora is a character that honestly belongs in the world of Nintendo. I mean, his whole game is about traveling to different worlds in the first place, so it makes perfect sense that he would end up in the world of Smash Brothers, which is 
a combination of a lot of different gaming worlds. So now his moveset feels like a real copy-paste from Kingdom Hearts 1, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's a very good thing because he plays just like how you would expect him to play. He's very floaty, just like in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and he's pretty combo-based, especially in the air, which is just like Kingdom Hearts. In fact, Sora is the fourth lightest character in the entire roster, right behind Isabel. And Sora's trailer? Holy crap, guys. I probably watched that like 50 times over because that trailer was magnificent. Mario grabbed the Keyblade itself, threw it, and then when I saw that keychain, oh my god, me and my friend KDP lost our minds. So you might be thinking, so if you main Steve and not Sora, why is Sora number one and not Steve? Well, it honestly just comes down to this. I have a huge connection to Kingdom Hearts, a lot more than Minecraft, and the character is really special to me. And even though I don't main Sora, I still really like to play him, and I would even call him a pocket character, if anything. Sora is a fantastic character, an amazing inclusion in the Smash Brothers. He fits in the game perfectly, and I could not be happier to see Mario and Sora and Link and Snake and Pikachu and Kirby all in the same game together. It's just mind-boggling. This really was the perfect way to close off Smash Ultimate as a whole. And with that all said, here is my overall opinion of all the DLC characters across both DLC packs. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next Top 5 video. Have an amazing day, everyone.